Hi, thanks for joining us. Here at Live Free Church, we're empowering people to live a life of freedom through Jesus Christ. So, get ready to hear a life-changing and life-empowering message from Pastor Terrell Taylor. Good morning, family. Good to see you here on my birthday. Is that why you all came to church? No, you came because you wanted to see some other people. That's okay. It's all good, but no. Great to have each and every one. You know, we are continuing our uh, series uh, on relationship status. Everybody say relationship status. And what we've been learning is a relationship status, right? It indicates the current relationship you are in. If you've ever, I believe it's when Facebook kind of first started, they had this feature on there. It might still be on there. But when you have a, a feature like that on social media, you can indicate, you know, if you're single, you're in a relationship, you're married. And then we're going to talk about next week how it can be complicated as well, all right? But last week we talked uh, to our singles and we talked about the importance of, of knowing, right, that in the single season of your life, it is a time to really get close to God. If you missed that uh, last week, please go to YouTube and you can find it there. But today I'm going to talk about uh, being in a relationship. Everybody say, in a relationship. Come on, say it again. In a relationship hashtag, right? Let's go to God prayer. God, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. We thank you for this opportunity, God, to be challenged, to, to be stretched, to grow, Lord God. Lord, we know that your work is alive. It's powerful, God, and it, it's a two-edged sword, God, and it divides even our, our marrow, our bone, Lord, our spirit from our soul, God. It is the dividing factor in our life to help us to grow and become more like Christ. And so, Father, we thank you for hearts that are open this morning. We thank you, God, that, that our minds are clear. We thank you, God, that your word is going to produce a harvest in our life. In Jesus' name, and we all said amen. All right. So before I get into my message, we know it's, it's Black History Month, and, uh, and so we have a few trivia questions. This week, I'm going to give you some multiple choice, all right? All right. You ready? All right, so who was the first African-American to serve as a U.S. Supreme Court justice? All right, was it William Henry Hastie, Thurgood Marshall, Charles Houston, or Clarence Thomas? We have Clarence Thomas. Who else? Thurgood Marshall. Anybody else? Thurgood Marshalls. Let's give it up for Thurgood. All right, yeah. <laughs> Thurgood Marshall, by the way, was an American jurist, and he became uh, selected to the Supreme Court. He was confirmed in 1967. Wow. All right, here's my next question. Who was the first African American to win an Academy Award? Was it Hattie McDaniel, uh, Dorothy Danridge, Sidney Poitier, or Halle Berry? Sidney Poitier. All right. Sidney Poitier. Anybody else? Are you all agree? Hattie McDaniel, you got it. You got it. Woo! Wow, that's good. It was Hattie McDaniel. She won Best Supporting Actress in Gone with the Wind. Yes, yeah, she became the first African American to win this award. Wow, you got some smart people in here. If you're joining us online, I can't hear you, so I'm sorry. Uh, the last one. All right, so who was the first African American to perform at the White House? All right? Perform at the White House. Was it Blind Tom Wiggins, Louis Armstrong, Aretha Franklin, or B.B. King? That's a pretty good one, huh? Who, who, all right, who says Blind Tom Wiggins? Can I see your hand? You said, all right. Who, who says Louis Armstrong? Oh, got a lot of Louis. All right, what about Aretha Franklin? Oh, okay. And what about B.B. King? All right. All you are wrong. 
<laughs> it's blind Tom Wiggins. He was an African-American, and he was a, an autistic savant, right? He was a piano prodigy, and he performed at the White House in 1860 before President James Buchanan. Wow. So let's give it up for all of these trailblazers. Amen. The African-Americans who've paved the way. You know, everybody, it's, it's just a great time to be alive because Jesus is still alive. Amen. And I love seeing how people have gone before us and have given us more opportunity. You know, matter of fact, you know, we're a multicultural congregation and we are blessed. Amen. With the fact, amen, that we serve the, a God of nations. Amen. We serve a God of nations, and so we're just uh, grateful for what he's doing uh, in the lives of his people everywhere. But we are celebrating Black History Month, and I am so uh, uh, proud of being born in this month. Amen. On this day. Mom, if you're watching, I know you're proud too, right? All right. So listen, uh, let's get back to the message today, all right? So we've been wrestling uh, with uh, which is to one another property. That's what to relate to each other relationships with each other that it, it, it pleases God, right? In such a way, right, that God is honored and people are honored. That's what we're dealing with. And, and you know, social media, of course, again, has made it a, a way that we can indicate to people what kind of relationship we are in. And so as we navigate through relationships, you know, sometimes it doesn't always, uh, it's not always easy, right? Sometimes it gets a little messy. Sometimes it can be very uh, intricate, and, and we have to find ways to honor God in whatever relationship we are in. Can I get an amen? And like I said, last week we talked about being single, right? We discovered the biblical view of being single. And, and that is not a punishment. If you are single, you are not punished by God, okay? You know, it's a season where you can get closer to God. I talked about how when you, uh, you know, you begin to, to uh, have a family, you get married, you got to share the pizza. I'm not sharing my pizza on my birthday today. I'm not doing that. But you have to share. You have to share your time. You have to share your focus. You have to share your money. You have to share emotions. But when you're single, amen, you can use that season of your life to glorify God in ways, amen, that you can never do if you were married. All the married people say, amen. All right. <laughs> we're going to talk about married folks next week, amen. Now, listen, when someone enters a, a romantic relationship, we know tomorrow is, is Valentine's Day, and it's a, a great day to, to celebrate someone that you love in your life. Uh, but when you enter into a relationship like that with someone else, there are a lot of things that change, all right? There's a lot of things that change. In a healthy relationship, uh, of course, there's more time uh, to be spent together uh, and less time to spend with other people. It, that's just how it works. You can't spend money on just yourself anymore, <laughs> right? You, you have to buy flowers for your significant other, right? You have to buy, uh, you know, a, a chocolate. Oh, how many chocolate lovers are in the house for tomorrow, all right? Right? But that, that's what changes when you enter a relationship. And, but one of the most significant changes that every couple knows who are in relationship is how to decide where to go to eat. That's a biggie. <laughs> and having to decide where you go out, right, when you're in a relationship, right, it's just not up to you. You have to, to, to talk that thing through, right? And, and you can't just go anywhere you like, you know. Now, I got some guys in the room and some guys online, all the guys in the house. Let me hear you. Let me hear you guys. Let me hear you. Brothers in the house. Ooh, y'all scared. Y'all scared. You don't know what I'm about to say, right? <laughs> But if you're like me, right, um, th that things can be a little complicated when you have to figure out where to go, right? And, and because if you're, if you're going to dinner with your significant other, you can't just ask where they want to eat. You also, you got to be involved in the plans as well. And, and you know, but, but it, it, it leans toward the lady, guys, right? It leans toward the ladies, right? And if the lady likes where we're taking them, we're going to be all right. 
Now, Tara, you're watching home. She's not feeling well today, but you're watching, and you remember this story very well. When my wife and I first started dating, the first restaurant I took her to was Ryan's. Anybody remember Ryan's Buffet? All right. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's Buffet, y'all. Y'all say, Pastor T, you, you were doing it up back then. Listen, I didn't have no money. But it's a 3.5 star restaurant. <laughs> it's not even as good as the 4.0 star Golden Corral, right? And so I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tara. I'm so sorry. I'm going to confess I'm sorry I took you to Ryan's. Okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm through that moment. Okay, so. No, needless, needless to say, okay, Ryan's wasn't Tara's favorite restaurant to go to, all right? Um, her first impression was this, and I quote her, my future husband took me to a buffet for our first date. Those were her words, right? And the reason why I do that is because uh, I did that is because I'm from Reno, Nevada. And, and in Reno, we have a lot of buffets, right? You can go to the hotel and casinos, and you can just buffet. I, I took that scripture that Paul said, buffet your body for the Lord. No, I think it's buffet. I'm sorry. But I was young. I got confused, right? To this day, I love buffets, y'all. If you ever want to take me out, find a good buffet, and I'll be right there with you. So anyway, when, it, when you enter to a relationship, right, you are committing to sharing yourself with someone else. And that's not always an easy thing to do, and it's not something you want to take lightly. And the Bible speaks about relationships, right, and how they are a fundamental part of what it means to be human. Let's turn to Genesis, the first chapter, and verse 26, and we're going to see something here about relationships. It says this, then God said, let us make what? Mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the air, over the livestock and over all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. What I want to key in on this verse is this. God says, let us make man in what? Our image, right? He is speaking of the three-part existence of the divine. It's called the Trinity. That is a theological term that can be very hard to understand. How God himself has exemplified in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit true relationship. For eternity past and eternity future, God will show us what the most beautiful relationship that there's ever been, and that's been the Holy Trinity. So in this verse, we see an evidence of how beautiful relationships can work, right? God, Elohim, right? He exists within the Trinity as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So this is my first point. I want you to write this down. God exists in relationship, okay? He, he has come up with a blueprint, blueprint for what it means to be in healthy relationship. Why? Because he exists in relationship as our Father, as the Son, and as the Holy Spirit. How many know God is big on relationships, right? He, he created us. He said it's not good for man to be all one or alone. Right? And not only in the marriage relationship, but it's not good to be alone in life. One thing this uh, pandemic has unfortunately done, it has isolated many people. It is, is, it's brought loneliness to many people because, listen, we weren't created to stay in our house by ourselves or with a significant other or especially with no kids. Come on. We were not created to live in a house with kids 24-7. Amen. Get outside, go play, run across the street, look for cars if you like. I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. No, but really, we weren't created to be separate from each other. That's why church, amen, is important, the gathering of community. I've told you this time and time again. Listen, digital community has its place, but it will never replace face-to-face -face communion. It will never replace coming together and seeing one another as the body of Christ. 
and I get so excited every Sunday that comes because I get to see brothers and sisters, perhaps that I didn't get to see in the week. I get to hug some people, amen. I get to encourage and be encouraged. That's what community is all about. You cannot do this life alone. Somebody say amen. Amen is simply a word in the Hebrew that means so be it, all right? So God exists in relationship. And if we as humans are created for relationship and God is our example, right? He expects us to do relationships well. That's the expectation of our Father. And let's look at Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Jesus offers us an answer here about how do we do relationships well. And um, he says this in verse 34 through 36, Matthew 22. It says this, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. He said this, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? All right, and we're going to stop right there. That was a question. And, and the Hebrew culture is big on asking questions. And so Jesus, he, he's, he's asked this question because there was a discussion going on in the Jewish religious circles of Jesus' day concerning which was the most important law in the commandments, right? Which was the most important of the ten words, or, or we call it the ten commandments that God had spoken. And, and so Jesus, he, he's thinking this through, of course, and he's the living word. So you ain't going to stump Jesus, y'all, all right? You, you ain't going to get him, right? And, and so I want to also bring this point out. Every rabbi and religious teacher had a various opinions on what this could have been, all right? And so Jesus answers the question, and let's look at verse 37 through 38. He says this. Love, this is the greatest commandment. Love the Lord, what? Your God with all your heart. Come on, all the young people on the call this uh, on Wednesdays, y'all been studying this already. It says, love what? Your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So where should our time and attention and energy be directed? It should be directed to the Lord, the Lord our God. Jesus told the man that the most important commandment was to love the Lord God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Uh, one of the Gospels even adds strength. And so he quoted a very well-known Old Testament passage from Deuteronomy that was a part of what the Hebrews called the Shema, or the Shema, right? And that means to hear or to listen, amen? And so Jesus was, was saying to, to the Jews of his day who knew the law, he was like, listen, you've got to love God with everything that you are. With all of your heart. What does your heart represent? It represents who you are on the inside. So listen, we can make it, we can make up all day. We we can put on certain clothes to make us look a certain way. We can wear our jerseys of an NFL team that will never probably ever make it back to the Super Bowl. We can do, you know, drive certain kind of cars, get this. Kind of, but guess what? None of that really matters unless this is right here, okay? Right? And your heart represents the inner person of who you are. Your soul represents your mind, the way you think, right? Uh, 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 you, how you process, what you think about things in life. Your soul, your mind, your strength represents your physical attributes and strength in life. So God is saying, listen, Jesus said, give God everything that you are, the inner part of you and the outer part of you. Your soul, your mind, your heart, your body, all of it. Love him with everything that we have. There's nothing more important than this. There's nothing more important than loving God with all of who you are. When we love God, you know, with everything and who we are, guess what? That means we're going to love him more than anything. We're going to love him more than anything. And when we love God more than anything, it becomes evident in our lives. Why? Because the heart, soul, and mind collectively, again, it represents the whole of who we are. 
When we love God with all of who we are, that means we are completely devoted to him. Now, I'm going to take you somewhere, so hang with me. So when someone is in a relationship with someone else, particularly with someone that they would say I'm in love with or they are in love, quote, unquote, in love. And, you know, let me just pause right here because I can't stand people that have been married for 29,000 years. And then one day they say they wake up. I just fell out of love. I just fell out. You probably fell out the car and hit your head. That's what you did. You don't fall in love, and you don't fall out of love. You love. There's no falling in and no falling out. That's a word for somebody today. Amen? Because everybody comes up with an excuse. You know, Johnny, well, I fell in love with Johnny, but then one day Johnny, you know, he didn't wipe his nose. So I fell out of love with Johnny. I'm just using simple illustrations. I don't want to go too deep. (laughs) <laughs> right? Falling in, falling out. No, you love. Love is a commitment. You know, love is a choice. You know, when you love somebody, feelings, and I'm going to just encourage all our single people, feelings ain't always going to be there. Oh, man, I should have got more amen. Some of y'all say, hey, hey. I know it's Valentine's Day. I don't want to get anybody in trouble tomorrow, all right? But you love, right? And so uh, when, when someone's in love, sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. You know, you, 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 you understand that when you meet someone and you begin to talk with them, what do you like about them? You like their smile. You like their humor. You like their kindness. You know, I got Tara real quick. I just smiled. I said, how you doing, Tara? And that was it. It was over, right? <laughs> But listen, Jesus says there's no greater commandment than loving God. And so if we love God first, I want to tell you this. You know, when you, how many can remember when you first started dating someone, maybe now you're married, and you just, you stayed on the phone, you never could stop talking about him. Right? Yeah, I remember those times. So what if you're in love with God? Isn't that something, isn't he someone we should never stop talking about? Isn't God someone, if we're in love with him, we're going to share him with someone else? Can I get a witness? If we really love him with all that we have, shouldn't it be a part of our conversation and interaction when we interact with people? I'm trying to help somebody today. Ladies, listen, if if you have a young man and you're single and he's interested in you, listen to his conversation. If all he can throw out is lines, oh, baby, you look better, oh, than juice in a cup. That's a bad line, by the way. (laughs) Run. Listen to the conversation. If all he can talk about is, is certain things, you know, if you never hear him talking about God, you need to run. Amen? Because God needs to be the priority number one in his life. But let me move on. This is my second point here. Listen, healthy relationships equal putting God first. Jesus reminds us how important it is to put God first. Because when God is first in our life, then the relationships, all of our relationships will have their place after God. Number two, just write that down. Healthy relationships equal putting God first. First, Now, listen, if someone loves God first, before they love their significant other, then guess what? All their decisions will flow out of a godly place. Can I say that again? If you know someone that you're interested in and you're about to begin a relationship, they better love God first. Because their decisions, amen, will flow out of their relationship with God. And so it's about priority. Everybody say priority. Now, though it sounds good to say that the person you are entering into a relationship is the priority, guess what? That's not healthy. Jesus even said, if you love your your spouse or your children or anyone more than me. Matter of fact, Jesus says it like this in the King James. You need to hate them. What does he mean? He's not saying literally hate them. That's a Hebrew idiom meaning to love less. 
So Jesus is saying, if you don't love your spouse less than me, if you don't love your children less than me, if you don't love this person that you are interested in less than me, you are not even worthy to be mine. That's some bold words from Jesus. Listen, Jesus is like, we got to be first. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We got to be numero uno in la vida. Todos los personas. Amen. Y'all just, I just flipped it on you right there. Is he really saying real Spanish words? I don't know. Play the tape back when you watch it back and see. <laughs> Listen, but when, when we love God first, we demonstrate the kind of love that God gives. The, this kind of love is what we know as agape love. The word agape means sacrificial and selfless sacrificial and selfless. It is a love that puts uh, nobody else before, right? It's a love that actually, I should say, it's a love that puts everything about you before everything else. It's selfless. It's a clear indication of the kind of love God wants us to have, not only for him, but for others. And guess what? The greatest example of agape love was when the father sent his only begotten son, Jesus to die on that cross for you, for me, for this world. That's agape love. That is selfless love. Now, let me ask you this question. Would you want to be in a relationship with someone whose love is selfish or whose love is inward focused? Of course you wouldn't, right? We've got a lot of selfish people today. And I pray because our society has not made it easy. We call everything I now, iPhone, iPad, I this and I that, <laughs> right? We're really focused as a culture many times just on ourselves, but we have to recognize that agape, agape love puts others before yourself. And so you don't want to be in a relationship with someone who is just about themselves, this kind of love, right, is not the gape or the God kind of love. That's why it's important to put God first in your life. I want you to look at this illustration real quickly, and it's on the screen. You see a triangle there, right? So when we put God first in our life, and then we're interested in someone else coming along, guess what? You're going to, as you grow closer to God, you're going to grow closer to each other. You see that? That's what a healthy relationship looks like. Putting God first. Putting God, everybody say, put God first. Because when you do that, you'll notice that that is what's going to uh, be the center of that relationship. It has to be God. It has to be God. And so Jesus continues his discussion. He says, okay. You got to love God first. You got to love him with all that you are. And that's the most important command. But guess what? Jesus continues. He doesn't stop there with our relationship with God. That's why the Bible is very clear. If it says, listen, if, if, if I say I love God, but I hate my brother, I am a liar. If I, love, if I say I love God, but I can't be there for my brother or my sister in ways, amen, that will help them, in ways that will, will be beneficial to someone else, then I am a liar. I can't say that I love God and ignore you. I can't say that I love God and don't, don't care about what you're going through or what you're dealing with. Come on. We've got to love each other. Amen. And that's why Jesus continues the discussion. Let's look at verse 39. He says, it doesn't stop a relationship with God. It's, and he says what? The second is like the first. Love your neighbor as what? Yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amplified Version says it like this. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor. As yourself, that is unselfishly seek the best or highest good for others. That means you're seeking the best for someone else. Because the whole law hangs on these two commandments, loving God and loving your neighbor. 
So Jesus connects this most important command with the second that is absolutely related to it. And, and so here's my third point. Write this down. It says loving others equals what? Loving yourself. Sometimes we have some people who are self-haters. God, why did you make me like this? Why do I look like this? God, why am I tall? Why am I short? Why am I skinny? Why am I not skinny? Why am I black? Why am I white? Why am I a male? Why am I a female? Why do I have hair? Why do I don't have hair? We can go on and on. Sometimes, listen, we need to wake up in the morning and say, God, I thank you for making me me. How many know we didn't choose our parents? We didn't choose our gender. We didn't choose our ethnicity. That's why racism and things like that are really very stupid things. Because none of us chose to be what we were. God chose that for us. And when God chooses something for you, you need to acknowledge him that he did it right. Just touch somebody, just real quick. Touch somebody. Say this, say this. How does it feel to touch something priceless? Amen. Now, don't go put them on eBay and try to sell them. (laughs) But you're priceless. You've got to understand that you have value. You can't just go into the supermarket and look at all these magazines like Cosmopolitan and on all these models. Guess what? They're airbrushed. That's fake. Catch a model without all her makeup. You'd be like, ugh. <laughs> you need to understand that you are valuable just like you are. And that doesn't mean we can't improve and and get better at things in our life and areas of our life. But that the starting point is valuing who God made you. Well, I'm not smart enough. Well, you will get smarter. Read a book that you didn't know anything about. And there you go. You're smarter. Well, pastor, I just don't know. No, don't allow the enemy. Amen. To bring those thoughts to you that you, amen, don't have worth and value. You don't have anything to offer. Everyone in this room, everyone uh, joining us online, you have value. You have something to offer your neighbor. But it begins with loving yourself, not in a selfish kind of way, but in a love that says, okay, God, I thank you for making me me. Now I am going to go help somebody. Don't miss this. When we properly love God and we receive his love in return, this unconditional love from God, the sacrificial love from God, right? It it is a love that, that will pour over into our relationships. It's a love that will help us navigate through life properly in relationships. You know, one of the things that most attracted me to my wife was the fact that she knew who she was in Christ. Really, really. She knew who she was in Christ. You know, she knew that she was created by God with full, uh, she was created by God with full value and incredible worth. She carried herself, you know, uh, like that, like she loved God. She really does, and she continues to love God to this day. That's what was the most attractive thing about Tara. The second most attractive thing, I will not tell you, but uh, no, she was, she was a woman of God. She knew who she was in Christ. And, and that's what, many, if you're single today and you want to, amen, move forward in a relationship, make sure they know who they are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Because he's the one who gives us our value. He's the one who gives us our worth. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of pressure sometimes when you meet someone because you feel you have to put on and you have to put on, you know, you have to play a role. <laughs> The best thing you can do is be yourself and to know who you are in Christ. Because someday it's going gonna, it's gonna to be revealed that you was playing games. One day it's going to be re- revealed that you were acting. And you ain't getting paid because you ain't in Hollywood. Right? So guess what? Be yourself. Listen, young ladies, if they don't like you for who you are and how you love God, then just give them the hand. 
I gave you permission last week to do the neck. This week, give them the hand. <laughs> Amen. They're not for you. You don't need them. If they can't value your relationship with God, move on. Somebody say, you're preaching to me. Pastor, you're preaching to me. <laughs> Here's my fourth and my last point. Look at this. Loving God, loving oneself, and loving others equals what? Loving relationships. I want you to key in on that. When we love God with everything that we have, our heart, our mind, our soul, then we can truly love ourselves because that is a love that is an unconditional love. And when we say, God, I thank you for loving me as I am, and then you value who you are, guess what? You can start to love others in that same kind of way. And then that will lead to loving relationships. We need some good examples, family, of what a loving relationship looks like. There are so many people who are filled with anger and, and hate and rage. You might want to post something that's going on good in your life, and then all the haters just come out. <laughs> you know? But you've got to be understanding that, listen, loving God, loving yourself, loving others will equal loving relationships. There's nothing better than being in a loving relationship. Can I say that again? There is nothing better than being with someone who you know loves you no matter what. And so it's clear that Jesus was giving us an example about how to do relationships when you are about to enter a relationship. You know, God created every single one of us, and he believes we are full of divine worth. And, and so I want you to, to I, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Are you treating the person that you're talking to, dating, or engaged to in, in such a way that honors God who created them? Are you treating him like you ought to be treating them? You know, sometimes we treat people bad uh, be because we are insecure ourselves. Sometimes in relationships, you know, it, it, it's about, well, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. Can I get a witness today? Sometimes in relationships, it's like, listen, I, I, I don't know about if I can really get over that right now. I'm going to hold this bitterness and unforgiveness toward you. Guess what? Those are not healthy relationships. You need to forgive. You need to confess. Amen. And I'm not saying that it happens overnight. And sometimes it's a process depending on how serious the problem is. But what I'm reminding all of us today, that when we love God, we love ourselves, we love others, we can work through any problem that may come our way. Are you encouraging those that you're in a relationship with? You know, sometimes we feel like we have to put other people down to build ourselves up. Mm. That's not a healthy relationship. You know, when I get around men who are taller than me, I just kind of tiptoe a little bit. I don't be like, Pastor Lou, why are you six foot two? Why didn't God make me that tall? Because he wanted me to be a five foot ten lover to tear. That's why. Amen. Come on, somebody. I'm just, I'm just soothing you, baby, because tomorrow's Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> no, but sometimes we 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 can't encourage and we can't lift up and we can't enjoy accomplishments that other people make. Let me give you a secret here today. If you want healthy relationships, learn how to embrace other people and love them in their accomplishments as well. Jealousy, envy, listen, it erodes relationships. We can't be people who are envious and jealous of other people. Don't you know that when God gifts you with something, that gift is not for you. That gift is for somebody else. You might think it's for you, but it's, it's not for you. Your gift to, is to serve somebody else. So if we're all serving one another, guess what? Amen. That is a beautiful picture of harmony and community and healthy relationships. Give, give, give God a hand praise on that one. Well, I, I just wish I could sing like such and such. Well, guess what? Find your gift and, and serve somewhere. You might not be able to sing. We don't want you up here if you can't. 
You got a gift elsewhere, baby. Amen. <laughs> right? But we're going to serve each other with whatever gifts God blesses us with. And when you're serving and when you're enjoying each other's service, oh, man, I tell you, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Amen? So Jesus ends the passage, and, and, and he says this. All these things hang on, on these two commands, right? Loving God and loving your neighbor. So what he is saying, and in my conclusion, he's saying this. If you get these two things right, loving God and loving others as yourself, then your relationships will be whole. And when your relationship status changes, right, whether you go from single to dating or, or, or engaged or even married eventually, you're always going to have God at the center of your life. You're always going to understand that your value is of, of, of importance, significance. And so here's our takeaway today, family. The healthiest relationships flow out of a deep love for God. Somebody say that after me. The healthiest relationships flow out of a deep love for God. So when we accept our God's love for us, and his love for us, of course, is agape, then we are able to love ourselves with a clear understanding of our God-given value. We love God first, love others in a healthy manner, then only then are we able to care for someone else in the way that they need to be cared for. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your love that empowers our love. Lord, without loving you first, we are unable to love ourselves and to love others. So my prayer for the family today, Lord, is that we would reestablish relationships with you first. That we would reestablish our relationships with you as our focus, with you as our center, as our number one relationship. And Lord, as we do that, God, you will lead us and you will guide us and you will help us when we begin to enter other relationships that go beyond singleness. And Lord, I thank you for brothers and sisters. I thank you for the community of Live Free, God, where we can come together in healthy relationships. Lord, whether we're, we're married or whether we're single or whether we're in between somewhere. I pray that we continue to serve one another, honor one another, love one another, accept one another. With all of our flaws and all, <laughs> Lord, knowing that your love for us and our love for each other means healthy relationships. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blueprint. Continue to help us and show us what we need to do in order to navigate this very serious topic of relationships. And I want to give you an opportunity, you know, if you're here today or you're joining us online, if you've never committed your life to Jesus, if you've never given your life to Jesus as a follower of Christ, a disciple, listen, we want to give you an opportunity today to come to Jesus. Anyone here today that you don't know the Lord as, as your personal Savior, you don't know the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, is there anyone here today? Is there anyone watching or joining us online? <clears throat> if you don't know Jesus, I'm going to share, uh, say this prayer now. The power is not in the prayer, but the power is in your heart change. The power is in your confession that you, that Jesus is Lord of your life with your mouth. And I'm just going to say this prayer, and you just repeat after me and those here today as well. Father God, I thank you for Jesus, your only begotten Son, who you sent to this world to live among us and to die on the cross for my I am great. I am grateful today that you offer forgiveness for me that you offer me eternal life through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I accept it, I receive it, and I thank you for it. 
My life is now yours. I'm committed to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's all stand. We're going to take a few moments and we're going to have um, some ministry at the altar. And maybe you're at a place where, um, you know, God is, you love him, but your relationship with him may be a little bit off focus right now. We're going to have our, our pastors and ministers come, and, and we want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. Maybe you're in need of a physical healing today. We want to pray with you. Maybe you're in the middle of a relationship right now that's very difficult, and there's things going on, and, and you want prayer. We want to pray for you today. Amen. And so we're going uh, we're gonna to have a moment with this song, and and I just want you to come and, and allow us to touch your life and pray for you and be here for you and with you because God wants you whole. God wants your relationships whole today. Amen. The altar uh, is, is open. We hope you enjoyed today's message and pray that you experience the freedom God has for you through his son, Jesus Christ. John chapter 8, verse 36 says, If the son gives you freedom you are free. If you would like more information about Live Free Church, please visit us on the web at www.livefreechurch.org.